spirit of God is at work in you. Flesh has a limit. But flesh plus the Holy Spirit, hello, is able to achieve great things for God. And we, a condition for us to save God and finish this great commission, uh, 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 complete this great commission which, which God has given us, is that you must commit yourself. You must give yourself holy to the Holy Spirit. Let me also just begin by saying that uh, God's desire is that his name should be glorified. And thank you, Fletcher, for, for, uh, for uh, the, the, this powerful verse that says, uh, from the rising of the sun to setting down, my name will be great among the nations, and in every place incense will be offered to my name, and the pure offering for my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of God. Malak 1, verse uh, 11. God's desire is that his name should always, 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 always be glorified in this world. And who literally raise up people that are... <laughs> you remember the story of uh, Pharaoh? <laughs> Exodus 9, verse 16. Pharaoh was literally raised so that God God's name may be proclaimed, God's name may be glorified on earth. In Exodus 9 verse 16, but I have raised you up for this very purpose that I might show up my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. He literally raised that faith so that his name may be glorified and may be proclaimed through all the earth, through Pharaoh. Are we together? Yes. So Pharaoh was raised up so that God, God's name may be glorified. God desires his name to be glorified. And in Exodus 1 verse 5, again he speaks about Pharaoh. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh, and all his army and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, this is very important for us to know that God always desires, God's desire to have his name glorified will never, 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 never stop. <laughs> Even to this moment, God's desire is that his name may be glorified. Wherever there is no law, no regulation that can ever stop the name of the Lord from being glorified if the children of God stand up. Hello? There is nothing that will ever stop God from being glorified. And I want to say that because sometimes it's like say, yes, it was possible for them then, but now we have a lot of other things that are that are uh, um, hindering us from proclaiming the gospel. That we look at ourselves as people who are, but I want to tell you that you, in the hands of God, you are able to do great things. God is able to glorify His name, even in those. Terrible and uh, and uh, restrictive circumstances. Recently, I was uh, I was uh, in Europe and I was sharing with the church there. And as I was sharing with them, and I said, "Look, we thank God that in Africa you are able to preach the gospel freely. You can go in the marketplace and preach. We can't preach here." Hello. Hello. I said, "Thank you." Yes, it's true. I can start singing some choruses, some choruses in Tandy that people will come around me and join me. <laughs> but in Oslo, they can't join me. <laughs> they look at me and they think I'm mad. <laughs> but I told them, I said, look here, it's the same spirit who is at work in Africa who is at work here. 
you and the Holy Spirit, you will be able to impact lives here. Possible is, where have we placed the Holy Spirit in our own lives? I strongly believe there is no law that can ever close out the Holy Spirit. Hello? He is able. Even if they don't allow me, I, on my knees, I'll be able to shake Westminster and the House of Commons. Oh, the man of the God's desire is that uh, his name should be glorified in the whole world. <coughs> and Exodus 17, 14, verse 17, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go after the Israelites and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and horsemen. God has given us his Holy Spirit that he may gain glory in the world as his name is being proclaimed in the world. Amen? Amen. God's desire, and understand that young people and old people like me, okay? That God's desire has not changed to this day. His desire is that his name should be glorified. Well, I love Paul. Paul says, you know, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. All I desire is that I will not be ashamed, but I'll make sure that God is glorified through my life. Whether, whether I'm alive or I die, Christ must be glorified in me. He understood that very well. That is God's desire. That his name should always, always, always be glorified. Amen? Amen. From the rising of the sun to the setting down, God wants his name, his name, to be glorified. And our Lord Jesus Christ also understood that very well. In, in John 14, verse 4, at the close of his life, he comes up, he says that, as he's praying that priestly prayer to the Lord, he says, I, Father, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work that you sent me to do. He knew that as far as his father was concerned, he desires that his name be glorified. And Jesus did exactly that. Hallelujah. Amen. I have brought you glory on earth Finishing the work that you called me to do. God always has used men, has worked through men to gain glory. You can cooperate with God. God has the power just to send angels and do his work, but he has in, he has, in, his, uh, in his plan, you and me, who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, have, have been given the opportunity to be part of that plan. So you always work through people. When you think of Moses, God it was God's desire that he gains glory by uh, moving the Israelites out of bondage, showing them all the, the, those uh, miracles in the desert and crossing the Red Sea onto the promised land. He needed a leader to do that and he picked on Moses. He needed a leader like David and many more whom God has used powerfully. God will always work through people. I brought you glory on earth by completing the work that you sent me. Even our Lord Jesus Christ himself came to do exactly that. Now, the Holy Spirit is key in glorifying the Father. You and me will never, never, never be able to glorify God on our own unless 
we allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. There is nothing in you that can ever please the Lord. Hello? Except the Spirit of God that works in you. Amen? There is nothing in you except when you link up with his Holy Spirit. John 20, 20, 21. When we look at the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, look for verse 18, he waves his manifest very hard. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, to set the captives free. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he continues to say, as the Father, no, before he gets there, he goes out in the communities, he goes out in the synagogues, he teaches and preaches and heals the sick for three good years. He sent his father powerfully. And as he comes to the close of his ministry in, in John 20, verse 21, he says, As the Father sent me, so I send you. As the Father sent me, giving me the mission to, to preach the king, to preach the good news to the poor. As the Father sent me, giving me the mission to set the captives free. As the Father sent me, anointing me with the Holy Spirit that will enable me to do all that. Are we together? So, I also send you. In other words, all that which the Father gave me enabled me to do the extraordinary. I'm handing over. All that to you. Amen. Amen. So that you do the same. Wow, that's powerful. So in other words, all that which Christ did whilst on earth, you and me can do it. And he himself comes up and says, greater things shall you do because I'm going to the Father. In other words, he's given us the capacity to do greater things than, than he did. Hello? <laughs> That's serious. Oh, me doing greater things than Jesus. And that's what he says. And remember, he knows, he knows, he knows that it will be the same spirit, it's the same Holy Spirit that was in him that will be able to accomplish all that. God has given us his spirit that we may gain glory for God. He knows how weak we are. Now let me just mention here again that uh, possibly let's begin a little bit looking back at the uh, Holy Spirit is not just power. He's um, God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the triune God. He's a person, he's, um, he gets grieved. The Bible is very clear that do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So he's not just power, power, power. He desires to have a relationship. I love one of my best friends. When he came to really greet this, uh, this fact that uh, he, he can do nothing without the Holy Spirit, you know, he developed uh, a practice every day to wake up and make sure the Holy Spirit is with him. He was practicing the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? 
He says, I will, I will, I will to, 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 to every day, I must make sure that he is with me and I will convince myself that he's with me. Because he promised that he'll be with me to the end of the age. So every day he wakes up in the morning and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. <laughs> what do you want me to do today? <laughs> Good morning, Holy Spirit. What a practice. And as he leaves his, his home every day, he would say, Be with me. Please teach me, guide me. He comes home in the evening to say, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for today. So he was conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit always. Hello? Amen. I tell you, I learned a lesson. For some men of us, Holy Spirit is like a power, a certain force. Someone says, a certain force, 1,000 kilobytes. Is it kilobytes or kilobytes? <laughs> I don't know, this world of computers. <laughs> it's not a force. It's a person. And he desires to relate to us. Hello? And remember, Jesus Christ, you are not really directed to Jesus now. Hello? He came, and Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of God there. The Father. And you will only be able to relate to Jesus through His Spirit. And that's why He says, Fine, I am going, but I will not leave you like orphans. I will send you another counselor. Amen? Amen. So that you don't live like orphans. Make sure you establish a relationship with this Jesus. But the only way to establish a relationship with this Jesus is to establish a relationship with this Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he is on the right hand of God the Father, seated there. The Bible says he's always interceding for you and me on the right hand of God the Father. But he's given us his Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit may continue to provide us encouragement and enablement for us to finish the task that he has given us. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let me say that God's God has always worked his purposes, his mission through people. And uh, in the Old Testament, God was uh, I think 